Yesterday, some brisk street fighting brought in three live Japs. A few hours before, we had cut down two of our Japs left hanging by their feet. They had been bayoneted, one still alive. The Japanese pride themselves on their politeness. The villagers delighted to see us. Many had given us valuable information about the enemy before we got in. Tomorrow they are laying on a sort of festival which they call a Pui, the first since we left Burma. treasures long hidden from the Japs. Silks, painted cloths and glittering ornaments were definitely the dress. Saw Bill Slim, looking a bit self-conscious, with victory garlands round his neck. The shape of the Allied plan was now becoming clear. As our columns advanced southeast from the Chindwin, the British 36th Division and a brigade of American assault troops known as Mars Force moved steadily southwards down the railway corridor from Michina. It was now a matter of time before these two drives joined on the plains before the Irrawaddy. Across the river lay the prize of Mandalay. In January 1945, the Lido Burma Road was completed. Through jungle and gorge, across mountain swamp and flood, every foot of the way had been fought for and torn from the jealous grasp of the earth itself. Human energy expressed in muscle, sweat and sinew had forced it through a thousand miles. The land link between China and her Western allies had been reforged. General Sir Oliver Lees, commanding all Allied land forces Southeast Asia, had been ordered to clear the enemy from the Arakan. This work, already brilliantly begun by the 81st and 22nd West African Divisions, was now supplemented by a series of amphibious hooks. Landings were made at Akiab, Ramri, and other strategic points. 
the Eastern Fleet, which throughout the campaign had crippled all the enemy's attempts to supply and reinforce by sea, now with every available ship joined the immediate battle. points, opposition was overcome and the Japs thrown back. Ships of the fleet steamed boldly up the narrow, uncharted waters of the treacherous coast, bringing men and equipment and the support of their heavy guns. Great air bases were speedily set up. The flow of supplies by air to our men poised before Mandalay now achieved a fresh momentum. But Slim's 14th Army had still to cross the Irrawaddy. Well, you know my plan. What it means is that we are attacking five Japanese divisions dug in behind a 2,000-yard wide river. And we've only got five divisions to do it with. Now, when I'm over the river, I've got to have another division. Well, sir, it's quite impossible with the airlift that's at present available. Well, we've got to cut everything to the bone and think of other ways. What can we do? Well, sir, the ammunition and petrol must go on. Yeah. We can uh, reduce to half rations all troops which aren't actually fighting. That'll help. And we shall have to go back and endeavor to get a larger airlift. Well, we've got a river. We've got a lot of trees. But we haven't got any boats. What can your engineers do about that, Billy? We have the elephants already extracting timber for bridging. We have forestry companies who can do the sawing for the boats and we have the workshops who can put them together. I think we ought to be able to build up to 10, 12 ton boats a day. Well, that's a good deal. That'll help us a lot. Well, gentlemen, it's not the first time I've asked you to do the impossible. And what we've got to do is to remember the 14th Army motto. God helps those who help themselves. Go to it. Hmm.
during the build-up period, General Slim had passed the famous Indian Dagger Division across the river some 40 miles north of Mandalay. For six weeks, a bridgehead was held against furious counterattack. He now ordered the British 2nd and the Indian 20th Division to cross just west of the city. The Japanese had, therefore, to decide where to concentrate their strength.